Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Steve, and today we're going to talk about galactic influences on the planet for the last 65 million years, since the extinction of the dinosaurs and up to the present day. Now, I only have about 12 minutes to present, so please save your questions until then. Okay, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at what's happened on the Earth over the last 65 million years, what's called the Cenozoic Era, and then we're going to take a look at what's happened with solar system's motion in the galaxy at the same time, and see if there's any correlation between what's going on in the Earth's local galactic environment and what's happened on Earth. Okay, so uh, to start, this is a graph that's compiled from oxygen isotope measurements. Uh, there's actually two graphs here. The horizontal axis represents uh, the age of the uh, measurement, and uh, the, for the vertical axis is the oxygen 18 to oxygen 16 ratio, which is used as a uh, favorite paleo temperature proxy. Uh, so there's actually two data sets here. The uh, one on top is uh, from Miller et al. 1987. And it uses a total of 680 measurements of uh, benthic parameters from the ocean sediment. And the second one on the bottom here is from Zappos et al. 2001, using over 10,000 measurements to reconstruct the climate history of the last 65 million years. Uh, so basically, both the graphs show the same basic trends. When uh, the dinosaurs roamed the Earth at the end of the Cretaceous period. The Earth was generally quite warm. There weren't any polar ice caps. The Earth was even warmer in what's called the uh, Eocene Thermal Maximum. Uh, there's evidence at this time that there were tropical palm trees and crocodiles residing within the Arctic Circle. And then since uh, 50 million years ago, the Earth has kind of gradually cooled off, uh, but it hasn't really gone in a straight line. It's gone in fits and starts. There's a major cooling event around 35 million years ago, uh, which initiated the development of the first ice sheets in the southern hemisphere on the continent of Antarctica. And it kind of leveled off uh, for the next 20 million years or so. And then there was another significant cooling event here uh, about 2 million years ago with the development of the first uh, ice sheets in the northern hemisphere and the initiation of the Pleistocene ice ages. And that kind of brings us to where we are today living in an ice house world. Oh yeah, so uh, most of these changes in the global climate are uh, explained traditionally using uh, tectonic processes like the arrangement of the continents and the change in circulation uh, patterns in the ocean and the atmosphere. But uh, I thought that maybe there could be another explanation. Okay, so the next one I want to show you is a compilation of climatic changes to the Earth over different time scales. Uh, and the axis on the bottom represents the uh, time scale on which these climatic variations operate, and the vertical axis is the uh, uh, amplitude of the of the climatic variation. So you see that the uh, the climate varies on local and global scales over the course of the day. It varies over the course of a year with the seasons. It also varies on decadal and centurial time scales due to variations in solar output and sunspot cycles. There's also a major cycle around 2,500 years ago, which is linked to the uh, sun's motion with respect to the center mass of the solar system. And uh, there's also the conventional Milankovic cycles of 22,000, 41,000, and 100,000 years. Uh, based on changes in uh, Earth-Sun geometry and the warming and cooling phases of Pleistocene ice ages. And uh, then there's also uh, been observed lower frequency climatic variations uh, for, uh, for some time in the geological record. Uh, one that operates on about a 30 to 40 million year time scale and another that uh, operates on uh, about a 200 to 500 million year cycle. Yeah, so like I said before, uh, these are usually uh, linked to tectonic processes. But I thought, well, you know, if, if all of these guys are based on astronomical cycles, then why wouldn't uh, these be based on astronomical cycles as well? 
such as the solar system's motion in the galaxy, which operates on roughly the same time scale. Uh, basically, the Milky Way galaxy looks kind of like this, kind of flat like a pancake, and the sun orbits around the center of the galaxy. Uh, it's it's uh, what's called a disk star. So it orbits around the center of the galaxy, but it also bobs up and down with respect to the galactic plane because it always wants to be accelerated for, towards where there's more mass. So it kind of undergoes this sinusoidal, uh, simple harmonic motion with respect to the galactic plane. Okay. All right, so now I'm just going to define a few terms, and these are basically just fancy words that I like to say as much as possible to make myself sound smarter. Paragalactic is the point in the star's orbit when it is closest to the galactic center. So uh, astronomers typically find the galaxies in the uh, conventional cylindrical coordinate system, R, theta, and Z, where R represents the galactic center distance in the direction parallel to the galactic plane, and Z is the perpendicular distance above the galactic plane. And theta is just the galactic longitudinal angle, which we won't really worry about in this case. Uh, Anyways, Apple Black's kind of is the point in the star that when it's furthest from the galactic center, so that's R max. And galactic plane crossings are, are occur when the uh, star passes through the galactic plane, so that's when Z equals zero. And uh, vertical maximum occurs when star is at its furthest distance from the galactic plane, above the look. And also, there are times in the star's orbit when it will pass through the spiral arms of the galaxy. But uh, we're going to neglect that in this case because it's really complicated and there's a lot of uncertainty about spiral structure, structure in the galaxy. Okay, but anyways, uh, just a simple model I, uh, I uh, used for the sun's orbit. It was out of a paper by Bash. He states that the vertical oscillation half period of the sun is 33 million years. So that represents the period of time between two successive galactic plane crossings. And the last galactic plane crossing occurred about 2.1 million years ago. So we passed through the galactic plane about 2.1 million years ago. We're moving northwards. We'll hit our maximum height about 14 and a half million years into the future, and then uh, proceed down towards the galactic plane again. Uh, he also states that we're currently approaching paragalacticons. So we're moving closer into the galactic center. We'll reach paragalacticon about 15 million years into the future. And uh, he did not provide a value for the anomalistic period of the sun's orbit, which represents the period of time between two successive paragalactic passages. Uh, but I chose the value of 154 million years, which is well within the range provided in this one. 